So, uh, hello everyone. Welcome to the uh, sixth session of the Rai Lab Impulse webinar series. And today we have uh, Guillaume from uh, Team Paris Pathway with us. Uh, and uh, they you know, were nominated for the um, best model uh, last year in 2019, where they, uh, uh, where they did design a model for um, uh, describing DNA-free bacterial cells. So uh, I'll hand it over to Guillaume now. Okay. Uh, yes. Well, um, hi everybody. So last year I was in the team group at Rissaclay and we decided to work on free DNA say, cell. The main issues was to answer the following questions. What are the consequences of destroying DNA into a cell? And could the DNA cell, could the free DNA cell still be useful? I'll try to yeah. right. To answer these questions, we choose to develop a mathematical model to express the dynamic of a free DNA cell. For, for that, we started from a deterministic whole cell model and we try to adapt it to the case where there is no DNA into the cell. For that, the main idea is to set all transcription rate to zero. So in the first part of my presentations, I will describe the dynamic of the cell when there is DNA. And after that, I will explain how to adapt it to broke the DNA into the cell. So um, first you can see a summary of our model. So here you can see a cell. The idea is that outside the cell, there is plenty, plenty of nutrients. And the cell can take them due to some transport enzyme. After that, the nutrient will be changed into energy by metabolic enzyme. And that energy can be used for transcriptions and translation. So in the model, the translation is made by free ribosome and free RNA. The idea is that uh, both of them can meet. And if they meet, they will give a bound ribosome and the bound ribosome will translate uh, the RNA to give new proteins. After that, the proteins inside the cell can disappear because two things. First, we impose the degradations inside the cell. We know proteins can live forever. And we also ask, this, uh, the model to add a deletion term. That term, the deletion term, lambda, uh, represents the fact that a real cell can grow. The idea is that the mother cell can transmit some component to its daughter. So you can see uh, just uh, many equations and I'll, first I will try to explain all of them. So, like I said in the model, the first thing is that there is a lot of nutrients outside the cell. So, we want to have an equation to describe the dynamic of the cell, of the, of, of the dynamic of the nutrients in, to the cell. So, the idea is that the nutrient quantity inside the cell will increase because some nutrients will come to the cell due to the enzyme transport PT. And that some uh, nutrients will be changed into energy due to the metabolic enzyme. Here you can see the term EHAIM. So the nutrient quantity will increase because some nutrients will come into the cell and it will decrease because some nutrients will be changed into energy. We also have the dilution term. The terms is everywhere just because the cell can grow. 
Uh, after that, when the nutrients are inside the cell, I have said that they can be changed into energy. So, after that, we want to describe the dynamic of the energy inside the cell. The idea is the following. The energy can increase because there is some metabolic enzyme to convert the nutrients into energy, but the energy will also decrease because there is many translations inside the cell. There is the creations of new proteins and all and for the creations, for the translations, some energy will be used. That's the meaning of the second term, the sum over each. Each represents here all protein that we can create, that we can translate, and the energy will decrease because of that. Here we made an assumption. We suppose that energy is only used by the translations process. In fact, in the real world, it's not really true because transcriptions can also use energy, but it's very, very low compared to the um, translations process. That's why we can do that hypothesis. So we have some energy inside the cell. The idea is to describe how the energy can be, how the energy will be used by the RNA and by the ribosome. So we want now to describe the dynamics of the ribosome and of the free RNA inside the cell. For that, we divide the ribosome into two types. First, we have some free ribosome. By definition, a ribosome is free if it is not involved in a translation process. We also have some bound ribosome. Those ribosomes are bound to RNA and try to translate some proteins. We denote by CH the number of a bound ribosome. Of course, we want to describe the dynamics for the ribosome quantity inside the cell. So for that, um, um, for that, we can use the following equations. When we can see that the ribosome will increase because uh, the bound ribosome will increase because at each instant some bound ribosome can meet uh, some free ribosome can meet some free RNA they will meet together and we will have a new bound ribosome. The equations, the second and the third term in the equations explain that we, the bound ribosome can decrease because, first case, because uh, the ribosome just finished its jobs and successfully to create new proteins. Or we also assume that bound ribosome can just divide into a free ribosome and a free RNA cell, about, uh, on the free RNA. And uh, they will just uh, decrease the number of bound ribosomes even if they didn't translate a new protein. We still have the division term. And uh, by the same way, we also have an equation to describe the dynamics of free ribosome. Due to that, we are able to deduce a differential equation to describe the dynamics of RNA inside the cell. So inside the cell, free RNA can be created by transcriptions. That the first term is very important because after I want to explain that we can model in free DNA cells. So in that case, we can guess there is no transcriptions. And all the other terms are just same things like uh, previously. We can say that uh, RNA can be free, RNA can disappear because some of them will bind to free ribosome, and the new free RNA will appear just because the bound ribosome can divide into a free ribosome and free RNA. Here we had a degradation term because here again we want that there is no free RNA forever, we want the free RNA, uh, we want uh, that quantity um, to degrade in the time. 
we still have a diffusion term. So we have uh, omega y, enfin, omega h, which is the rate of trans frictions. So um, just before we, enfin, just now we have explained that we can set uh, equations to describe the dynamic of ribosome and free RNA. Due to that, we are able to describe the um, dynamic of the protein inside the cell. So in the model, we describe four protein. Well, there is four protein. First, we have some ribosome. The dynamics have been described just before. We also have the transporter enzyme. So the enzyme are here in the summary. It's the protein that takes the nutrients outside the cell and bring them inside the cell. After that, uh, we also have some metabolic enzyme. It's the proteins which transform the nutrient in energy. It's, uh, you, we also, well, we can see that uh, in the summary, just uh, what there is, an uh, amazing cell named metabolic enzyme. We also have um, some housekeeping protein. It's some protein that we have into the cell, but those protein doesn't really matter for the proper functioning of the model. But the cell needs those protein. That's the reasons why those proteins are also described. Well, the dynamic is also described. Uh, well, so just after we have the dynamic for the protein quantity, we can see that protein will be created by translations and that protein can decrease because we have degradations and dilution terms. Of course, we have to define what is the dilution terms. For that, we assume that the total mass of the cell is constant. It's just the sum of all proteins and all ribosomes. And if we assume that the mass is constant, we can say that the derivative is zero and therefore we can have a value, we can compute a value for the dilution term. Due to that, we are able to see again the summary of the model and to understand everything we had seen before. Like I said, we have some, nutri we have some nutrients some transport enzyme will take them into the cell. The cell will transform the nutrients into energy and the energy will be used to produce new proteins. It's okay, we have a marvelous model to explain what happens if there is still DNA into the cell. But what happens if we want to cut up the DNA inside the cell? For that, my team used some nuclease to degrade the DNA inside the cell. From the mathematical point of view, no DNA just means there is no transcriptions. So the main idea is to set the value of all transcriptions rate to zero. But we have to be careful. Why? Because, in fact, the effect of the nuclease is not instantaneous. In fact, it's progressive. So we can just say, okay, now the transcription rate will be zero. We have to do something else. That's the reason why we had an exponential term inside the equations, inside the transcription rate. But if we had a new term, we have to define what are the parameters of this term. So we have to explain how to find the alpha into the exponential. For that, we use uh, some biological experiment and my team show that um, if we use nuclease, we can reduce of 99% the transcription rate after 15 minutes. You can see here the results we obtain. So now we can use the model to have some information about the dynamic of free cell 
pre-DNA cell. And the principal purpose is to say how long a free DNA cell can still be active. So you can see the summary. Here there is no transcriptions. And due to that model, we were able to find exactly the same thing that our biological experiment. A consequence of the model is that the total amount of ribosome will stop increasing. We can see that on the blue curve I have put into the right of the screen. But we had exactly the same thing by biological experiment and the model seems to have the same result. It's nice. It's great. Another result we had is that uh, until 15 minutes, the DNA less cell will continue to produce some protein just like the cells where there is still DNA. For that, we plot the ratio between the number of housekeeping protein inside the cell without DNA and inside the cell with DNA. And we can see on the curve that until 50 minutes, there is no really difference. The value is still one. That means that the, even if there is no DNA inside the cell, the cell continue to produce proteins a short time. And one idea we have emitted last year, it was in theory, if there is enough cell component inside the cell, maybe even if there is no DNA inside the cell, the cell may still divide. Sadly for us, the, mathica the mathematical model was unable to explain that because our model consider mainly the bacteria populations as a biomass, as not as a single um, bacteria. In the third part, uh, my team try to understand a result they had in their experiment. Because biologically, one of the main experimental results was to try to replicate some RNA informations inside a bacteria where there is no DNA. For that, we use a phage. And we try to um, give to the free DNA cell, we try to give it some genetic material. But even if the succeed to do that, there was an intriguing result. In fact, the number of phages produced inside the free DNA cell was very low compared to the cell when there was when there is uh, DNA. For that reason, we tried to model in the phage infections. The phage infections were into a cell where there is DNA and where there is no DNA. So for that, we have to explain how the phage wheel um, works. So the assumptions is that uh, the phage RNA will be replicated by a viral protein, the RDFP, and that the RDFP protein will be produced by translations of the viral RNA into the ribosome. We also assume that the RDFP replicates the viral RNA into a minor strand, which serves as template to produce new positive strand uh, viral uh, RNA the, uh, to produce new viral RNA inside the cell. So, uh, in our experiment, the viral RNAs encodes four proteins. The first one was the maturation protein. The second one was a capsid, a capsid which was able to link between the viral RNA. We also, the viral RNA also encodes uh, a lysis protein and um, a DAP polymerase. The idea was that the capsid was able to bind the viral 
RNA and prevent them from being translated by ribosome. So for that, because the main purpose for the mathematical part was to explain that with equations, for that we had some hypothesis. We assume that the duplication is exponential and that the duplication just depends on the uh, LDAP enzyme. We also assume that all LDAP proteins will find a free viral RNA. Why the second assumption is just because we want to simplify the expressions into the dynamic for the duplication weight for viral RNA. And we just want to say that the duplication weight is proportional to the LDAP proteins. So, uh, due to this hypothesis, we add uh, dynamics for the duplication weight. Uh, just here, you can see that the duplication weight is proportional to the number of LDAP proteins, to the speed of the polymerization. And of course, we have to divide the weight by the size of the viral RNA. The idea is that if the viral RNA is very, very large, the duplication weight will be very low. Uh, like I said, uh, the viral RNA anchors for some capsid protein, and the capsid can prevent the viral RNA to uh, be translated by ribosome. So to express that into the into our dynamical model, we change the weight well, we change the weight which allows the ribosome to link with uh, RNA with the viral RNA and we find in the literature every constant we need. Due to that we were able to so here you can see the some results uh, we used to compute the value of the constant uh, caps. And due to that, we are able to have a new model that take in account the fact that we infect free DNA cells with a phage. We have just um, below the pictures, we have the new equations. And due to that, our model was able to explain why there were less variants into the free DNA cell. To explain that, in fact, we compared the production rate of patch proteins in the DNA-less cell and with the cell with DNA. So due to that, we were able to plot a new curve that, and that curve uh, try to explain uh, the curves represent the fact that uh, there is less ribosome into the cell where there is no DNA and there is most ribosome, uh, there is most bound ribosome in the cell where there is DNA. And to that, we conjecture that if the team observed that there was, that the position of the phage was lower into the free DNA cell, it's because there is less ribosome. And now, thanks for your attention. Thank you for this wonderful talk. It's really thank informative you. and you really explained it well. So thank you so much. And I'd also like to invite you to our session next week by team uh, Paris Betancourt from 2018. They um, they designed this artificial intelligence based software to design um, antimicrobial peptides. So I'd also like to invite you to that session. But uh, yeah, thank you so much for this wonderful talk. Thank you for joining us.